Let me begin at the beginning. I was born in a remote village in the eastern part of India, Bengal. And I went to the primary school, which is also in the village, a small school. You know, when I entered the school, it had one room, one teacher, around 150 students. And then from there, I went to the neighboring village for my high school. And I did science there. And from there, there was no college nearby. So I went near Calcutta to do my you know, undergrad college. And I was lucky to be you know, admitted into a, a very good college called Narendrapur Ramakrishna Mission Residential College. There I did my statistics honors with minor in physics and mathematics. And then I went to ISI, Indian Statistical Institute. I would say one of the most you know, famous institute in the world in statistics. There I did master's in statistics called NSTAT. And there I specialized in economics. So I went to Delhi to specialize in economics. And also I started doing my PhD there in mathematical economics, for which I was not really happy how it was going. So then I made my journey all the way to Australia, uh, to Australian National University ANU. There I did my PhD in econometrics. So it was like combination of you know, statistics and economics that I had done before. And from there, I, as a postdoc, I came to CORE, Center for Operational Research and Econometrics in Belgium. And after my one year postdoc there, I was lucky to be landed in a you know, job at the University of Illinois at urbana champaign And that was back in 1983. Now, in 19, at the end of 90, 2017, that's 34 years, I'm still at the same place with the same job. And I have been, of course, you can imagine I've been very happy here. I think it is, I was kind of very pleasantly surprised. In fact, I have been surprised for the last 34 years about this. Uh, first, if you really think of the impact, you know, now we have the Google Scholar. And now we can find a number, and I think in terms of citation, there have been thousands, you know. I don't know how many, maybe 4,000 or maybe 5,000 citations. I mean, that's like a numerical, you know. But, but when I look at it, you know, because I'm coming from econometrics, so it is just not in econometrics, you know, applied papers, people use this JB test. But also, I have seen papers in astronomy, physics, chemistry in many, many areas where they use JB test for which it is not meant to be. So they look at JB test in a completely different way. Recently I found, you know, somebody is using JB test to classify the stars, you know, you know, depending on the value of the JB test. I mean, that's quite amazing, you know. So when you do research, you have no idea what its future impacts is going to be. So and I, I still remember this, you know, how this, you know, Carlos Harke and I got together. And I, I remember that when I was working on this, I was also doing my PhD thesis. My thesis was supposed to be in a completely different area under Professor Ray Byron on nonlinear estimation. So I was doing this part time, you know, testing normality with Carlos Harke. And he will come and check on me. And one day he came to my office and found that I was working on nonlinear estimation. He was not very happy with that. And he told me something like, look, Oni, you know, you are not working on the normality test. You know, he was almost like my you know, supervisor. He said, oh, you know, he was one senior to me. Look, after 20 years, nobody will read you about your non-linear estimation. But if, if you can do this, you know, normality test, it will be, you know, will become famous. And that time I just, you know, laughed at him, you know. But I think he had somehow, he knew, I appreciate that very much, that he understood the importance uh, of this and he forced me to work. And in that sense, I'm quite grateful to him because I didn't have much experience doing research and he was one year senior, already wrote a paper. So in some sense, you know, he was kind of helping me to guide, you know, the nitty gritty part of the, you know, doing research, what to do. 
that time I didn't have any idea that you know impact of this. But now I can see this particular test is you know in almost in all the uh, econometrics textbooks, particularly in the undergraduate textbooks and all the econometric softwares, and it is being used you know opposing statistics and so many branches of science, you know, physical science, social science. So I think, you know, uh, I, I'm surprised by this. But I think the main reason for its you know, popularity is the simplicity. Because we have a lot of, a lot of tests, but you never see them, you know, what they look like. But I think, you know, even when a Darwin Watson test is very hard to find out what is really doing. But once you look at JB, you know, I'm not trying to really, you know, kind of uh, say too much about my own work. But once you look at JB, you know exactly what you are testing. You can look at the two components and each component has a very, very practical meaning. And again, which comes from the statistics. Now, uh, the same components have been studied very thoroughly by Carl Pearson and R.F. Heeser. But to combine these two components in a nice way, I think it was uh, now a very nice thing to do and I think the simplicity of it and the intuition of it I think made it so popular. It was not really an idea at first, it was more like a question. When I joined ANU, Austin University, I didn't have a formal kind of training in modern econometrics so I was asked to audit the econometrics courses, they call you know, BA honors courses in econometrics given by like you know, Adrian Pagan, uh, Pravin Trivedi, Ray Byron, who was my formal advisor, then sometimes his classes by Des Nichols. And of course, I think I enjoyed, you know, the Adrian Pagan course most. And, and he taught the basic econometrics, but his basic was really very, very rigorous. So he started with the standard linear regression model and every time in you know, the first few classes he will always write down this you know, epsilon is iid that means independently and identically distributed as normal and then he will go on saying that you know we must test these assumptions. Then as a part of this you know exercise he talked about Darwin Watson test for testing independence then he talked about his own Broyce and Pagan test for testing heterosedasticity. Then he was about to move on to you know, some other model. Then it was just kind of, you know, came to me instantaneously. This about this IID normal. I just kind of without thinking, I said, no, what about this normality part? Don't you want to test this? Uh, he wasn't very happy with this question because just couple of classes back he was talking about this non-normality then he did say that you know it does not cause a big problem in econometrics in terms of you know inconsistency or you know standard error so uh, so he said no this is not really important for econometrics the you know so but I thought you know maybe you know but still not a exactly important for econometrics but we can still think about uh, testing this assumption because it was part of the assumption. So, so, so this idea is not an idea that of testing normality, but it is the question, you know, can you test all those basic assumptions of the standard you know, linear regression model? After I had the idea, uh, to get to the final test statistics, it was indeed a long process, but let me make it as short as possible. And so the, of course, you know, for any research, you need, you know, not just the idea, how to implement it. That means you need some tools. So one tool that I learned from the Aiden Pagan class is called Rao's code test. And the kind of most, kind of most, you know, impressive thing for me was that when Adrian Pagan was talking about this, Rao was more like a mythical figure. But I have seen Rao day after day at ISI, you know, ISI campus. And he has been talking all the time about this Rao scores principle or called LM tests, which require estimation only under the norm. So in my case, it will be only under normality. 
that is we use the OLS estimator. But you need a kind of alternative class of distribution against which the test will have power. And for that I had to in fact go back 10 years to my college. There I did a course on called Pearson family of distribution. This is a family by Carl Pearson. He suggested in 1897 and we had a semester long course on this class of distribution. It's a very complex class. But we estimated this class of distribution for different data sets using facet machines. And then the class ended. And you no, know, it was more like that we were just doing it for you know, writing exams. And we never thought what would be the usefulness of this. Now I can see combine this you know, Pearson family of distribution from my undergraduate class to the Adrian Pagan class where he talked about Rao's code test, which ironically I didn't learn at ISI, and put them together. And there's a lot of complex calculations. But at the end of the day, what was there was a very simple and kind of elegant, you know, mathematical expression. Almost like, you know, I won't say uh, this you know, as a glorify my test statistics, but more like, you know, as if like Einstein's E is equal to MC squared. So simple, but at the same time, for me, so profound. And in this process, I got the help from my senior. Uh, PhD student Carlos Jarque. You know, he was more experienced and when I asked told how this idea, he appreciated the idea, then we worked together, okay, on this idea and you now we found the test statistics. So the process was long, but the end result was a very simple and elegant formula. What happened once we got this idea of this testing normality, we found that we can extend this to incorporate other aspects of econometric modeling like heteroscedasticity, autocorrelation, functional form, uh, now not only linear model but you know, probit, probit, simultaneous equation system. So in fact we kind of set up a huge you know, research uh, kind of you know, collaborative you know, projects. So we already plan almost, you know, instantaneously like you know, seven or eight papers to write. And of course, I could see that all papers cannot be like Vera and Harke. So one day, Carlos came to me because our first paper was, you know, as a ANU discussion paper. It was Vera and Harke, and which got eventually published later on as a you know, Harke and Vera. That's the way the name came, Harke and Vera. So since we are writing so many papers, Carlos proposed that first paper should be done by randomization. So he came with a coin and asked me to choose. So I just selected, you know, uh, tail and of course he tossed the coin, it was head. So the first paper, that is the normality paper was, you know, Harke and Vera. But then we had other papers with Vera and Harke. So that was the underlying story behind why now it became Harkin Vera test, which is mostly used you know, all over in econometrics. And but I didn't bother about this, you know, even now at all, because even then it was for me getting the research done, and it was more like a win-win thing for us because both of us benefited in some way by collaborating, you know, on this research. And I think all collaborations should be like this because what we want get the work done not to worry about who comes first who comes second and so on so um, over the years i have worked with maybe at least 40 people and rarely had problem with my co-authors in any way and so you now many of the time i just put my student name first no matter what the you know, letter of their you know, surname is and so so the collaborative research, I think it is should be a kind of, you know, an enjoyable experiments, getting the work done. And I think at the end of the day, what you want to get something simple so that people will use it, so that people can understand it or people can see the intuition behind it. And I think somehow JB test had this kind of quality, the simplicity, at the same time, some amount of rigor. Okay. And so that's why I think it became you know, popular and useful. 
And, and if I can quote in this context, like, you know, I, I, I don't know, this will be uh, stretching it, but if you think about the biggest thing in human endeavor are all simple. Like Einstein is equal to mc square. I think that's the equation has influenced, you know, our life most in some sense. So that simplicity is always, you know, kind of my priority for doing any kind of, you know, research. So the simplicity, practicality, and the intuition. Okay. So this will be the kind of, I say, you know, main ingredient of, you know, a good, you know, research and its result. Thank you.